Hi guys! So today's video is going to be on how to write a good resume and this video is going to be a collaboration video with the one and only Nurse Bass. We decided to collaborate on this video because it's been so highly requested and so my video is going to be about how to write a resume from a nursing perspective and his is going to be on how to write a resume more from the nursing student perspective. So make sure you go over to his channel. I'll leave the video link down below. Check out his video, check out his channel, and make sure you subscribe. So there's many mixed views on resumes. Some people say, you know, your resume has to be top notch because, you know, that's the first thing that a manager looks at before they're going to interview you. And some people say, well, no one really even looks at interviews, so why does it really matter? In my personal opinion, who cares if they look at your resume or not because you never know if they're going to. So you need to have a top-notch resume to make sure that you can show that you're extra special to get yourself an interview. So before we get started, I actually put a link down below to a resume that I did so you guys can kind of follow along and it's kind of like a template for you. So that way, if you're needing to write a resume, you can kind of just plug in your information and you'll have a resume. So. A little disclaimer, I should have thrown this at the beginning, but that's okay. This is just my personal way of writing a resume, and I think it's, you know, very simple and nice. There's tons of ways to write resumes. There's tons of different things that you can and cannot include, so this is just my personal preference. So at the top, you are always going to have your name, your address, your phone number, and your email. This is your contact information, so that way they can see where they need to go to to contact you if they're wanting to do an interview with you. Make sure you have an appropriate email address, whether it's your school email address or just like your name. Don't have your email address from the fifth grade fluffy6592 pink bunny at gmail.com. Make sure you throw that one away, write a new one just for a resume if you need to, because you really need to have a professional email address. So the next part is your education. So I like to include where you got your education at, what year you graduated, and what degree you held. And if you held any minors or sub degrees, whatnot, put that in there. So once you graduate from college, you don't want to put your high school education on there because you want to do your most current. Now, if you had an associate's and a bachelor's, then that's kind of a little different. But you know, you don't want to include your high school education on there, mainly college and up once you graduate college. So the next thing is going to be your work experience. Now everyone does this differently. Some people like to do it chronologically from their oldest job to their most current job. And some people like to do it based on whatever job you're applying for. You want to put the job at the top, the first job that most closely relates to the position you're applying for. So in my case, I was applying to the ICU. So I put my ICU experience at the top and then went down with what I thought would be most relevant and pertaining to the ICU position. But you can go either way. You can do chronologically or you can do based on experience. So now, of course, you're going to have your job. I like to put the location of the job and how long you've been there for and how when you stopped working there or if you're currently working there, you'd put to current. And then you go down and you. I like to have at least three bullet points of what I did for that job. Now these, you can look things up online and they pretty much give you what to put there. But all these bullet points need to be pertaining to the job and I like to keep it simple and easy to read but still keeping it sounding professional. Another great thing to do here is go on the job that you're applying to's website and look at their missions and what they require you to do and kind of reword those and put those in as your um, qualifications for the job. So if you were a CNA and you want to put your CNA experience in for your RN position that you're applying for, go onto the RN position and look for what they're looking for and kind of reword it and put it in. Now I'm not going to read off my examples. You can download the free resume template that I have down below and you can kind of follow along and see. But basically all these need to be things that you did at this job that would qualify you for the next job. At the very end, I like to put additional qualifications. This is where you put your CPR, your BLS, your ACLS, if you're tele-certified, if you per were in an honors group, if you were part of a nursing club, or if you're part of a nursing organization, anything that's kind of nursing related or that shows that you went above and beyond and you're more qualified. Now before I got nursing experience, but when I was applying to my first nursing job, I actually had volunteer experience. So I did put my volunteer experience underneath my work experience and you could also put that 
and additional qualifications as well. I hope this video gives you guys just a little brief overview on how to write a good resume. Now, like I said, there's so many ways that you can write resumes, but make sure you hop on over to Nurse Bass's channel. Again, I'll have all his links down below and check out his video because I'm sure he has a different perspective and you guys can learn different things from him than you did from this video. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and Nurse Bass's channel and I'll see you in my next video.